So in this video, I want to, to talk about essays. In academic writing, you will most certainly encounter quite a, a number of questions, different kinds of questions and essays are some of the questions that you, you should expect to, to work on. So I am picking on essays because I feel essays have a specific uh, format to them. That's why I feel it's important for me to talk about them. And um, there are also quite a number of essays that you might be encountering. So in this video, I'll, I'll talk about some of those essays you might encounter, the basic parts of an essay, and uh, also show you some examples of essays and also differentiate an, an essay from just a normal question that is not an essay. So first off, um, I'd like to just uh, say that you can write essays for different uh, reasons. You can uh, write an essay to persuade people. So in that case, uh, we will call it a persuasion uh, essay because you are writing to persuade people of a, a certain truth or you want them to believe certain thing or you want, them, you want them to have a certain worldview and so on. You might also want to argue, you might be arguing. So in that case, we'll have a argumentative essay. So whenever you are writing something, you want to argue, maybe there's a reason for you to argue. Maybe you want to argue that uh, autonom autonomous cars are better than uh, the conventional cars, so you might uh, write an argumentative essay. You can also just write an essay to describe something, you know, maybe you want to describe how kidney dialysis works. So in that case, we'll just call it descriptive essay. There could be more, you can just go and check them out online. You'll find uh, many types of essays, but in all, all these, uh, the basic thing about all these essays is that they have three basic parts so it doesn't really matter the kind of essay that you are you are working on an essay will basically have uh, three essential parts and this uh, include the introduction they have the intro the action and then how the body and a conclusion so an essay has these three basic parts, it has an introduction, the body, and the conclusion. So regardless of the type of essay you're writing, as long as it's an essay, uh, you must have these three uh, areas. So I want to start with uh, an introduction because it's one of the basic uh, tenets of, of an essay. So let me just talk about an introduction. So an introduction is usually the first uh, paragraph uh, it does quite a number of things. Uh, it may give the background information. It may also, uh, <coughs> sorry, it may also uh, serve as an attention grabber, where you want to uh, grab the attention of your readers to make them, you know, just uh, pay keen attention to what you're writing. So the introduction may also do that. It may also include uh, your argument. So in the introduction, you can start with an attention grabber. You can offer some definitions of key terms if uh, it's applicable. Remember, don't just define things unless there's something unique about those definitions. So um, let me just start by saying it can have an attention grabber. So usually, um, I prefer using statistics relevant. Let me just emphasize that relevant, relevant statistic it could be an interesting quote or anything you know you can just go online and check an attention grabbers when you are talking about essays or speeches just a way you sort of just bring your readers or your audience into the entire conversation so you sort of just use something that will make them um, pay attention more or focus or just forget everything else they were thinking and just focus on the paper. So the introduction also might contain um, some definitions. You might want to define key key terms 
uh, you must also want to offer um, background information, background information, you know. So in defining key terms, um, it's always very important to avoid defining terms that are, are obvious, you know, unless there's something unique about the definition that you want to you want to bring to your, your reader's attention, then you should not be defining those terms. For instance, if you are talking about the effects of corruption and you feel there's something very unique about the definition of corruption that most readers don't know, then in that case, it might be worthwhile or it might be necessary for you to define corruption. And uh, when you're doing definitions, uh, a tip is that uh, try to uh, borrow definitions from reputable organizations. Or individuals, but in most cases it will be organization. So you, if you are talking about corruption, you might want to borrow Transparency International's definition, the World Bank definition. If in the case of let's say um um or, or let, let me just say obesity, you might want to define it according to the World Health Organization. And in this uh, introductory paragraph, when you are referring to these organizations. It, it is not necessary to, to cite, to have an index citation. You can just say, according to the World Bank, um, corruption is A, B, and C. So you don't need to also include an index citation because you're just referring to an organization. Anyone who wants to see or who wants to confirm can just go and find it from their website and, and so forth. So background information is also some of the things that we might in, um, find in the in introduction. So what a background information does is sort of just um, lays out the background of the entire topic of the entire essay. And um, it may also uh, now transition your reader from the attention grabber and the statistic you provided and probably the definitions to now the focus of your essay. It just serves like uh, a transition from now you know, maybe you, you, you're talking about corruption and you use the statistic that according to the World Bank, the U.S. loses $2 billion every year to corruption. So the background information will now um, serve to tell your readers that your paper is not going to be talking about how much money <coughs> the U.S. loses. It will now introduce the aspects of, <coughs> sorry, um, the effects of corruption. So the background now will now focus on the effects of corruption and sort of just provide a background uh, saying how corruption affects so many things and, and, and all that. And then very, very important is the last sentence of introduction, which we call it the thesis statement. So the thesis statement should always uh, be the last sentence of introduction. So a thesis statement, it just sets out uh, the argument. It sets out the argument. Let me see if I can get the definition of a thesis statement online. So thesis statement just, um, it sets out the argument. It shows your position. Let's see what uh, people are saying about thesis statement. Yeah. So it's a brief introduction of your topic. You state your point of view on the topic directly and often in one sentence. So of course, a thesis statement is, is just a, it's just your point, your argument, okay? It is the last sentence of, of your introduction and it's it usually in a, in a single paragraph. So you can go and uh, read more about that online. But um, a thesis statement basically sets out your argument. So let's say you, you are you are arguing that uh, autonomous cars, or let me say self-driven cars are better than uh, conventional cars. So this is where now you, you, you will state it as the last sentence of your, of your introduction. So an example would be,
So, um, maybe you started by with an attention grabber, and then you went to defining key terms for the background information. And then um, at this point, you want to now give uh, your argument. So in this, in this case, you're arguing that uh, self-driven cars are better. So in the last sentence of your introduction, you must identify your position. So your position is that self-driven cars are good, okay? But you might also not at least three reasons to go along with your position. So in this case, I've introduced, I've stated the three reasons why I'm saying they are good. So they reduce, they reduce road accidents, they improve navigation, and they can help reduce traffic congestion. So I could have more reasons why I want to, why I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm preferring uh, sort of driven cars, but I'm only supposed to have at least three. And the three is very important because the next section we'll be learning is called it the body. The body of an essay must have us at least three paragraphs. For you to qualify as an essay, you must have at least three body paragraphs. And the reason why you're saying that thesis statement, you must have at least three reasons to go along with your position, is that these three reasons are the ones which are going to form the three body paragraphs. So you can have even five reasons, but it's just good for you to identify at least three as you are <coughs> in your thesis statement. So the thesis statement just sets out your position. So let's try it. If the topic was effects of corruption, after um grabbing your reader's attention defining key terms and offering a little bit of background information on the topic a thesis statement will uh, look something like this So if the topic was uh, effects of corruption, so you you started with uh, with the with a, a, a attention uh, grabber, and then you went to your key terms, and then background information, and then the last sentence now, which is your thesis statement. Now this is where you set up your argument. So in this case, the topic was. Uh, uh, let's say benefits of self-driven cars or anything related to you know autonomous vehicles, and then in this case the topic or the the subject uh, was uh, uh, effects of corruption. So this will be my last sentence, which will serve as my thesis statement. So in this case, I have uh, indicated or, or just sort of given my readers an idea of my focus. So I've introduced, I've, I've shown that uh, corruption is affects, uh, more or less my position is that corruption affects society, but I've introduced three reasons that, or three areas that I'll cover in the body. So um, already my readers can, know, can, can tell from this point on that uh, I'm going to talk about social effects of corruption, political effects of corruption, and economic effects of corruption. So, um, a thesis statement in a conga, it, it, it will be more clear when, when you're talking about arguments or persuasion. But if it's just a topic like effects of corruption, maybe you're not trying to persuade anything, you're just trying to state or just, you know, inform, inform people about a certain, you know, a certain ill in society. A statement like this, a sentence like this will perfectly work as you are, as your thesis statement. So you can write it in different ways. It doesn't really matter as long as we can see this is now your position and this now is the focus of your of your paper. So um, you guys can go online and read more about thesis statements. But basically, the thesis statement is a very important part of introduction. It is always the last sentence of introduction and it should be a single sentence. 
it should contain your position and also give like an idea of how the body will be structured by identifying at least three uh, sections or three paragraphs or three reasons uh, which are going to form uh, the body. So um, a thesis statement is very important and I cannot emphasize that further. Uh, if you have any questions, you can try to do thesis statements and if you have questions, you can just engage me. So let me go to the next part, uh, which is, is the body. So again, uh, the body now, which is now the second part, the body you organize your body into uh, you organize your body into paragraphs and make sure the paragraphs are organized around ideas so basically the the three reasons that you indicated in your thesis statement should be the one forming your body and be very very careful make sure that uh, the ones that you started with like in this case i started with reducing road accidents so my first body para body paragraph will be on how autonomous cars reduce road accidents. So you can have a section header, reduce road. So of course that should be title case, accidents. And then you have now the paragraphs explaining how autonomous cars reduce road accidents and then you go to the next one which was uh, improving navigation so of course again you develop that that idea you can have as many paragraphs as you want as long as every paragraph has an idea that starts and ends there so you can uh, explain this idea in as many paragraphs as you want but be very careful that you make sure every paragraph that you have under uh, road accidents is uh, on its own and uh, is like don't mix up the ideas. So separate your paragraphs into ideas. I have a video on this which explains how you organize your ideas into paragraphs. You can watch that on my YouTube channel. So the next part um, will go to road uh, reduce traffic congestion so of course now we'll have that okay again and it's also good to have these section headers because they they help you structure your ideas and also they make it easy for whoever who is reading your work to understand because you have uh, specifically identified the parts but do not have a section header called body okay we do, we do not have a section header called body Okay, so you, after you've, you know, identified all the reasons. So in your thesis statement, these are the reasons or the areas you, you touched, you know, in your thesis statements. You could have more. Now, after identifying the three that you had in the order in which they appeared in your thesis statement, you can continue adding others even if you did not identify them in the thesis statement. So you can have as many. The thesis statement is only that you must, must have at least three because an essay must have at least three body paragraphs. So every element that you've identified in your thesis statement should be on its own paragraph in the body section. So that's all about the body. I think um, the body is more or less about organizing your ideas, which I've done a video on that. So organize your ideas, organize your paragraphs around ideas so that every paragraph has an idea which starts and ends there. Let us go to the conclusion. So the conclusion is the third part of a section of an essay. Conclusion. So in conclusion, you usually uh, avoid introducing new information. Okay. Do not introduce new information in the conclusion. Conclusion is just um, a summary. It's just a summary of uh, the points, the ideas or points that you already talked about in your in your essay in the body section. It's just a summary of the of the ideas you have talked about. Okay, so you should not be introducing uh, any new information. So make sure you summarize all the information. Summarize 
all the points. Don't leave any out. So an example will be, maybe you talked about uh, effects of corruption and you are keen on, uh, uh, on categorizing these effects into social, economic, and uh, political effects. So in the conclusion, you should uh, talk about all of them. Okay, so you can just write something like this. Yeah, so uh, maybe in your body you talked about social, economic, and political effects of corruption. And under social effects, you looked at how it affects education and health. Under economic effects, you talked about uh, economic development, FDI, and unemployment. And under politics, you talked about poor leadership and uh, political uh, violence and, and, and riots. So in the conclusion, you should identify all the all the points. So that's what a conclusion does. So it's, it's important to avoid introducing new information in the conclusion. Make sure you summarize all the points that you had. And then the final thing you can do in the conclusion that is that you should uh, provide a takeaway message. You know, just add a sentence that answers the question. That answers the question. The question, what now? Okay, at the end, what now? What should your readers do after reading the paper? So in this case, let's just do a what now message. So in this case, I've just given a, a takeaway message, you know, reminding my readers that, you know, as you have seen, corruption affects every everyday life, you know, economic, political, and social. And it's not just an issue for the politicians to solve. We need the economists to be in the picture. We need, uh, so, uh, you know, humanitarian uh, personnel to be in the picture, advocates. We need all of these people to be in the picture because it affects every aspect of life. So this is just a takeaway message that I've included here. So this is how you should be doing your conclusions. You should not introduce any new information in the conclusion. 
you should make sure your conclusion summarizes all the points you had. Do not leave any point out because you leave it out, it might uh, carry the message that those points were not really important. And also some people don't read the entire paper. So people may just scroll through to your conclusion and read it. So if you leave any points out, you're actually not giving your readers everything, you know? So it's just good to have every point at the conclusion because some readers will just read your introduction and read your conclusion. So it's just good to do that. Include all the points you had, but in a summary format. Do not, uh, do not just, you know, make it so sketchy. And I want to emphasize this. The conclusion is a complete paragraph. You know, some people treat conclusion as like um, like just a sketch or um, something that is not important. The conclusion is a complete paragraph which should have uh, an opening sentence. It will have well-developed sentences and it will also have the last sentence which is the takeaway message. So of course, it must be at least three sentences which is the rule for any other paragraph. I have a video on this, so if, if you have watched it, you already understand what I'm talking about. So a conclusion is a full paragraph. Do not um, just write a sketchy thing and because you think it's a conclusion. It's a full paragraph which should be well developed. It should have a it should communicate. It should have uh, it should have meaning. To have it should have meaning to your to your paper. So um, I think I'm um, done. Uh, explaining the, the sections um, we have already said that essays um, they have three parts they have the introduction they have the body and the conclusion the introduction you will start with the annotation grabber you will of course um, you will of course now introduce if you want to talk about definitions background information and all that and then you should have your thesis statement one key thing about um, the introduction is that whenever you decide to use uh, a statistic, you know, probably you are talking about uh, self-driven cars. And the statistic is that in 2020, approximately 2 billion autonomous cars were, were manufactured. It's a good statistic, but you, you must as well go as far as explaining what that statistic means. I've seen many people drop their statistic and they go. You cannot just drop a statistic and go. You make sure that once you have identified the statistic you want to use as an attention grabber, you explain what it means. So for instance, uh, you you are saying, um, according to the World Bank, Kenya loses two billion every day to corruption. Full stop. That is a good statistic. It you know, it mesmerizes your readers. It sort of grabs their attention. But don't stop there. Go as far as tell your readers what that data means. So you might continue in the next sentence by explaining your statistic, saying how that money is a lot of money in, in Kenya's context, what that money could have done and all that. So you go as far as explaining what that statistic mean, means in the context of your paper. So do not just drop that statistic and forget about it or that quote and forget about it. Put that statistic, statistic or quote there and explain it. Explain what it means to your readers. Why should your readers care about that statistic? And it's very important because most of you will just put in a statistic and go. That is wrong. If you're going to use a statistic or a quote for that matter, make sure you explain what it means before you even go to the definition of key terms or background or the thesis statement. So have a statistic and explain what it means. So um, uh, moving on, how do you know that this is an, this is an essay? So um, like I said, essays have these three basic parts, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. So if you're given a question and it's an essay, sometimes they'll tell you, you know, an essay of three pages, three pages essay. So if you see any word essay appearing, of course it's an essay. Sometimes they won't even tell you. But you can decide to do as an essay, to, to approach the question as an essay, if you can see clearly, it has a dominant idea. 
just one dominant idea. If you are given a question that does not have one single dominant idea, it's just like uh, many questions or many ideas put together, then most likely that is not an essay because even if you decide to do it as an essay, how will you introduce it? Yet it has various parts that do not really relate to each other. How will you introduce it? What thesis statement will you use? You know, it's very hard for you to to introduce a question which has multiple parts that are uh, not related, unless you now you decide to introduce every part which is unreal, unreasonable and you know illogical. So um, if you see a question that has uh, one dominant idea that you can really just trace through and through, this is one idea, then that is an essay. Let us look at examples. So I've pulled out a couple of examples of essays. So let us look at the first one. So do professional athletes deserve the increasingly high salaries that they, that they receive, then requirements? Today's top professional athletes often have salaries and bonuses in tens of millions of dollars. Do you think these athletes deserve such high compensation? Why or why not? Explain your position and use specific reasons and examples. So this is a clear downright essay because you know one you can pick a side and you can support your side with the reason so of course you will start with an introduction you can start with a statistic you know just say um something like um but it, ha it has to be a, a real statistic you know like um according to a b c d the most the the the, the richest athlete in the world and Two billion every minute. You know, it's a good statistic. Start with it and then explain what it means. And then you will offer background information. I don't think there's anything you're going to define in this in this in in this uh, example because you can't define the word professional. You can't define salary. You can't define athlete. So there's no definition here. And uh, now you go to your thesis statement. Here you will pick a side. So it can be. You can structure your thesis statement to, to read. While many people argue against the high salaries at least receive, their salaries are a reflection of the hard work they put in every day, the money they bring their clubs, and also a reflection of the importance of talent. So I've picked my three reasons that are they had they work very hard, so they deserve the high salaries. They also bring their clubs a lot of money through endorsement and also they have the, it's, it's a talent so it's a rare thing which uh, of course uh, warrant warranties uh, warrants for such high compensation so i've introduced the interesting statistic and i've offered a little bit of background information on the topic and then i picked my position that uh, i agree that they should be paid more. And then I've identified at least three reasons. So my the body now will focus on explaining the three reasons that I've identified in my thesis statement, plus any other reasons that I might have that I did not include in my thesis statement. So this is an essay. And we say it's an essay because you can see it's a dominant idea, just one idea about athletes and high salaries. So of course it's one idea, one and, and then an essay. This one is talking about increasing CCTVs in public uh, places. Is it a good thing? So of course, again, you can pick a side. So start with a statistic, maybe um, say according to so-and-so, there are approximately 2 billion uh, camera, CCTV cameras in cities around the world. So it's a good statistic. Then what does it mean? What does that statistic mean? Then the increasing number of statistics mean that many people and businesses are trusting these cameras for various reasons. So I've explained what the statistic means. And then a little bit of background, and then you pick your position, which will now come in your thesis statement. In this uh, section, you will uh, you will say um, 
maybe you can say many people think that having many CCTV cameras is a bad thing. But the truth is, it's a good thing because of A, B, and C. You know, that is your first statement. And now the body will focus on explaining A, B, and C. And D or E or F if you have all, the, all of them. So this is an essay. Again, is marketing through social media the most important outlet for business in the current time? So of course, this is an essay. You also pick a side, statistic and all that like you've done. So again, here he you can address this. You can, you can, you know, address it as a as a, as a as an essay. So reputable scientific studies continue to show that the Earth is warming at an unsustainable rate because of rising CO two and methane. Reflect on your daily life. How may the risk of these gases influence how you live your life? What steps can you can you can you cut can you take to cut down? The amount of these gases, okay? So this, of course, you can approach it as an essay. Start with the annotation grab. It could be a statistic. Maybe you want to tell your readers like uh, that, uh, the, the, according to so-and-so, the world uh, warms. The earth is warming at two degrees every day, you know? Could be your statistic, but it has to be a real thing. So then you explain what it means, background. And then your thesis. So in this case, your thesis will include uh, will will capture all these areas. You can capture all these areas in your thesis statement. You can say while global warming continues to wreak havoc, people in their own small ways can do a lot to curb the continued rising uh, atmospheric temperatures by doing A, B, C, and D. You know, or E or F, whatever. You know, it could be a thesis statement. So that's an example of a thesis statement you can go along. So I want to also look at other questions that might not necessarily be uh, essays so that we can see the difference. So I'm just going to open it. So you can see, if, uh, if you read this question, Choose a discipline within investigative forensic. Okay, so the student has said has already chosen toxicologist. After choosing the discipline that in this year, there's the following questions. So you can see these questions are not really related. You know? What are two things that are interesting about this area? What are two things present challenges? What do you value? What value do you believe as an expert witness? Blah blah blah. So we can see is an assignment with the questions that are not really related you know so you cannot really introduce have a thesis for this so in most cases this question you will not tackle it as an essay because as much as that one dominant idea of forensic toxicologist there are other guiding questions here that sort of just makes it a little bit uh, hard for you to introduce for you to have a thesis statement so in this case every you just start you can introduce yes but but then it's not really necessary for you to introduce just start answering the questions directly okay so you can just have a section header for this section header for this other part and then that section header for this and then you just make sure you answer all and then if it's two page you make sure you distribute words according so two two pages are is three six hundred words so you have three, six hundred words to answer three parts. Part one is what are the two things? Part two, what are the two things that challenges? And then part three. So you divide. So it's six hundred divided by three. So every part two hundred words. So it's very important for you to divide words accordingly so that you don't write too much for one area and then too little for another. So this is not an essay. So you cannot really answer it as an essay. Yeah, so, so write an essay about climate change. So, of course, this question is already telling you it's an essay. So, I'm just going to skip this because already they are telling you it's an essay. So, there's no, you know, second guessing, an essay or not an essay. And then, uh, of course, it's just an outline, not an essay, of course. And then, how extensive and, and extensive is the opioid crisis in the U.S.? Yeah, so... 
you can see there's a dominant idea here about opioid crisis there are no other guiding question that might throw us off of the of the trail when it comes to introduction in the thesis statement so you can handle this as a test as an essay have an introduction uh, which will include a statistic maybe you want to see how many people are uh, on opioid how many people are opioid or how many what the quantities of opioid are abused every year a good statistic will do and then um, you know I don't think you might want to define opioid but if you feel it's necessary go ahead and do that and then you offer a little bit of background information after the background you want to of course now move on to your thesis statement which you will you may you may just say that uh, the you can say it's extensive or it's not extensive so if it's extensive, we can say the opioid crisis in the u.s is extensive as indicated by a b and c and then of course now you describe what a and b and c means in your body so this this can work as an essay why do you think it's important for the master's prepared nurse okay master's prepared nurse to be able to search the literature so this is just a simple question. It's a 200 word. So you can't really work as an essay because remember, an essay has to be to have introduction, the body, and the body must have at least three paragraphs and then have a conclusion. So if you decide to go as an essay, you know, by the time when I'm at the introduction, the 200 words are out already. So this is just a discussion post. You just answer in a paragraph or two straight away to the answer. Not a really an essay. And then you can uh, look at this. This is a scenario, it's more or less a case study. Usually, case studies you go straight away to answering the question. Okay. But if you read through and you realize it's an essay, but, but by this time you already know what an essay looks like. And then of course this is also not an essay because you can see it has parts it's actually forcing you to have, have have these parts so you may not really tackle it as an essay you might just go straight away to answering every question so you have a heading for this heading heading for this heading for this heading for every part yeah so similarly this is not an essay because you can see there are other parts in within which will make it hard for you to Use an essay, of course, be any one page. If it's one page, you can't have an essay if that is one page because where will the introduction go? Conclusion, then the three body paragraphs, so it's certainly not an essay. Yeah, so again, this can uh, be an essay, you know. So basically, you can go online and read more about essays. Yeah, but uh, sometimes you might be told to write an essay. And then you have been told what to include in introduction. So if you have a question that is an essay, but there are also additional instructions, which, uh, you know, sort of just tie your hands on what you can talk about in the introduction and the conclusion. Don't worry, just do what they say. Even if I say you should not introduce new information in the conclusion, if the question is telling you what you should include in the conclusion, just go ahead and include that, even if it's a new idea. So sometimes peer they can tell you to write an essay and uh, they tell you what to include in the introduction. So if they have specifically told you, write an essay and in your introduction include the following, in the body section include the following, in the conclusion include the following, don't worry, don't fight them, just go ahead and do what they're saying that is all about essays and um, i hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh, i'll be talking i'll be available for any questions that you might have regarding essays so goodbye for now